Nobody has nice and it won't miss it. This one sells to some last of wood. Did you get it? Did you get it? I said, I won't get it. This is the. Hey guys, welcome to chapter 8 of the Skyward Sword video walkthrough. And uh, this chapter is going to be a little different than some of the previous chapters in that uh, it's sort of a mixture, a hybrid of side quests and main quest stuff. Uh, in general, the main quest, our, our next destination is over at the sealed grounds in the Farren region. Uh, however, there's a few things we can do uh, before then. And uh, even as the walkthrough progresses, there's going to be uh, we're going to gain new abilities, new characters, we're going to meet new people, and uh, this is going to trigger new side quests as well. So overall, this is probably going to be the longest chapter, at least uh, to date. Uh, chapter eight is going to be longer than the first seven, um, and there's going to be a lot of optional stuff and uh, a mixture of everything. Uh, right away, I can tell you if you want to continue on with the main quest, just skip ahead to. The next video. Uh, so where we left off, we were in the Temple of Time after that pretty sweet cutscene, and uh, I suggest just running around the Temple of Time region because there's um, there's some bugs to collect, there's some few treasures, uh, and a few goodies. There's also, since we've left and now returned to the Temple of Time region, just outside the temple, I guess, uh, the bugs have respawned. In particular, there's the sand cicada here, and as I mentioned in the previous or two chapters ago, uh, this is one of the more this is one of the rare bugs in the game, and uh, there's not that many uh, locations where it's where it's found. So uh, be sure to pick up a sand cicada if you haven't picked up one yet. Uh, you could just keep returning to this area over and over if you'd like, because these sand cicadas are almost always up against this wall. So uh, it's a good idea to just, uh, you gotta be a little cautious when you creep up on them, just so that they don't run away. Anyways, after uh, capturing a couple bugs and, uh, you know, using your gust bellows on the various piles of dust, uh, let's return to the sky. And in particular, our next destination is going to be back over in Skyloft. Now that we have the Gust Bellows, there's some new Gratitude Crystals that we can pick up over in Skyloft. So just ride on over with your bird and uh, return to the main island in the sky. Uh, there's also another Gratitude Crystal quest that we can start at this point, but it, this particular quest has multiple phases. And um, I'm going to be starting it now, however you can't complete it. And uh, just giving you the heads up on that just now. Uh, you'll also notice that throughout my time here in Skyloft, I'm going to be doing some fast forwarding just a little bit, uh, just because there's a lot of stuff that's uh, it, it's just mindless running across town. And uh, I cut off several minutes from the video just by doing some editing. So, anyway, we want to head on over to Malara's house. And Malara's house is actually, well, it's actually labeled as Pippet's house. Malara is Pippet's mother. So once you enter the house, just run on over and speak with Pippet's mother. And she basically starts complaining that the house is all dirty and everything is dusty. And uh, she even asks Link to clean it up for her. Um, and she mentions that she doesn't have any real cleaning equipment of any sorts. Uh, usually she just allows the wind to come in and it sort of cleans up the entire place and blows the dust away so she doesn't have a broom uh, thus you need to use your gust bellows that's why you couldn't do this particular side quest before uh, so the entire room is filled with dust and all you got to do is run around and uh, use your gust bellows to blow away the dust. I'm not exactly sure where you're blowing it to. <laughs> it's not like you're right. It's just going into the air and probably will fall somewhere else. Anyway, the dust is not only on the ground, but it's also along the various furniture and the mirrors and paintings and everything. So uh, it takes some time. It's not that bad though. And uh, it, there's no like tricky dust that's like hard to find. 
uh, other than, well, the fact that there's some dust on the walls as well. Uh, don't worry about breaking any silverware. I know in some places in Skyloft that's a, that's a problem. Uh, not in this area. She, if you if you use the gust bellows and you blow down some of the silverware and it falls to the floor and breaks, uh, that's not a problem at all. I guess uh, Molara is more concerned with cleaning the house than breaking silverware. <laughs> uh, so make sure to also use the gust bellows on the bed and the mirror and the and the various counters and uh, after completing all of the dust Malara will be very grateful for you and uh, you will be rewarded with five gratitude crystals uh, in addition to that Malara will also give you 20 rupees yay uh, this also triggers a fun little like side note side quest of sorts that's completely optional but uh if you return to malara's house later on or pip's house at nighttime you will hear malara and pippet sort of getting in a little argument basically saying that pippet's complaining why are you wasting your money and giving it to people why are you hiring people how pippet has taken a job at the night academy as like a night patroller at nighttime and uh, just to earn enough money for them for the family and now here <laughs> Pippet's mother is just going ahead and wasting these rupees anyway I'm going to flash forward over to Batrio and I found out that I was pronouncing that wrong since it's a French name it's not Batriex or Batriex it's Batrio Batro something like that I'm hopefully I'm pronouncing it right this time around Anyway, now that we have enough gratitude crystals, you can speak to them, and uh, you can get the big wallet, which allows you to hold up to 1,000 rupees. Uh, additionally, with all of the uh, like side wallets that we got, uh, this will bring our total up to 1,900 rupees. Uh, a treasure chest will also appear, but Batrio is basically encouraging you not to open it because it contains the dreaded cursed metal and uh, the cursed metal it's not really too useful for you it allow you to find like treasures and rupees more frequently however you won't be able to use any of the other items in your adventure pouch you're better off just you know filling up your adventure pouch and then having the treasure and the rupee and the heart and the life metal and all the various metals they have additional effects uh, plus you'll be able to use your shield and bottles as well so uh, basically the cursed metal is a good idea to get just for the fact that well it's you want to get all the items in the game and you want to you know complete it a hundred percent but uh, I don't suggest using the cursed metal at all uh, I in fact didn't even have enough uh, room in my adventure pouch so it immediately got sent to the item check location once again, I've uh, jumped ahead a little bit in the video, and uh, this is the beginning of Fledge's side quest, and uh, I title it, Fledge Wants to be Strong. Uh, while if you talk to him right now, he doesn't really say anything new, uh, however, later on in the quest, you will find Fledge walking around, uh, sort of by the plaza, by the light tower, and uh, he mentions that he's trying to get strong, and he's been working out at nighttime, if you you could even though he doesn't actually say that to you in the open just yet right now if you go to Fledge's room at nighttime you can see that he is trying to work out and uh, he's trying to work out in the form of doing push-ups uh, so if you go to his room and just uh, go to his room at nighttime you can use his bed if you'd like to fall asleep but uh, once you awake you'll find Fledge right here doing push-ups and he's trying you know to get strong uh, initially when you first talk to him now he's only at five six seven push-ups so he's not able to do too many push-ups at least not yet and uh, part of the problem is that he gets tired and he well, he wants to be stronger but uh, he doesn't have enough stamina really uh, fortunately there is a potion for this type of thing and uh, it's it wasn't available 
earlier in the game. In fact, uh, they didn't want you. Apparently, they didn't want you to get it for the Laneru mining facility. Uh, but now that we've completed the Laneru mining facility, it is now available for purchase over at the bazaar. So uh, once again, I'm just gonna jump ahead to the bazaar, and uh, if you go and speak to the potion lady, there you'll find a uh, a bubble over her head. Uh, she mentions that the stamina potion is now for sale. Um, and uh, basically what the stamina potion does, it, the initial stamina potion, it allows you, your stamina meter goes down slower. So uh, they didn't want you to use this in the Laneru region because of all the sink sand portions. Because if you were able to use it, you would have been able to dash across longer distances of sink sand without uh, without actually solving the puzzles as they wanted you to do. Uh, I sort of completely botched that trying to scoop up the stamina potion, but really you just have to talk to or look at it and then talk to her and you can purchase it for 50 rupees. You're gonna need at least two of these uh, stamina potions just for this quest. Uh, however, we're not gonna be able to move further move further along with this side quest until after well the first part opens up after the Laneru mining facility but uh, the next part doesn't open up until after the uh, the next dungeon actually so uh, and then the the third portion won't open up until after the fifth dungeon so uh, it's it's a pretty lengthy side quest although you could just do it all at once after the fifth dungeon I just want to show it now uh, you could talk to Fledge here, and he sort of acknowledges that you've now seen him. And uh, I'm going to jump ahead to his room at nighttime, and uh, you can talk to him now that you have stamina potion. He's still only at five, six, seven push-ups, but uh, talk to him, and it's pretty much the same conversation. But now he realizes you have stamina potion, so uh, agree to give it to him, and this will sort of like revitalize him. And I like how he, he like. Or raises his hands up like <laughs> it's pretty hilarious actually but uh, uh so this is like he'll he'll keep going at his push-ups and i uh, just keep encouraging him uh unfortunately right now nothing will, will really change so even if you go to bed and wake up and go to bed and wake up and if you come back after night he'll still be at five six seven push-ups so he hasn't really progressed much at all so uh, just this is pretty much all we can do in fledge side quest so just go to bed and uh, once again I'm gonna uh, skip ahead and our next destination is at Beatles air shop there's uh, a few goodies or not a few goodies but at least a goodie we can purchase uh, if you've been following along with the walkthrough completely uh, you will have, well, I have close to 800 rupees. Uh, hopefully you're somewhere in that ballpark. However, depending on what you've purchased, depending on what you've upgrade, upgraded, you might have more or less at this point. Uh, I've already purchased all of the like wallet upgrades, and I've also purchased one of the adventure pouch upgrades. Uh, the second adventure pouch upgrade costs 600 rupees, while the initial one only costs 300 rupees. And Beetle actually comments on like the escalating prices. Uh, it's worth it, I'd say, at this point. It's the seventh, uh, the seventh slot basically in the adventure pouch, uh, with all of the medals that we're gonna get, as well as the shields and bottles. Uh, it's a good idea to have seven pouches locations. Um, we're eventually going to get an eighth pouch. In fact, if you go back into Beetle's air shop, it'll be for sale already for 1,200 rupees. And uh, that one might be in a, uh, a purchase that you may or may want to get, but uh, that's quite expensive. But uh, I suggest if you have the rupees, why not? Uh, if you follow along with the walkthrough, we'll get plenty of rupees throughout our quest uh, in order to purchase it. Uh, so now that we have the advent, uh, the extra adventure uh, pouch slot, you can put pretty much whatever item you want. Uh, you could put the bottle in there if you'd like. Uh, I don't really need three bottles, but uh, I decided to put three bottles in there anyway. For some people who are struggling a little through the game or just not used to Zelda or the combat system, uh, 
you could keep three bottles and fill them up with potions and uh, or the uh, shield potions and such. Anyway, that's pretty much going to do it for this section of the walkthrough, and uh, it's pretty much going to do it for all side quests uh, that we can do uh, up till this point, more or less. Uh, our next destination is the Sealed Grounds over at the Farron region, as mentioned by the woman over at the Temple of Time. So just uh, fly on over, and uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this video, and uh, I'll see you guys for the next video which will immediately start with a cutscene once we enter the green beam of light. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video and enjoy that cutscene at the beginning of the next video.